Good day, my name is Adrian Bowen and I'll be doing this presentation on Latuca sativa, commonly known as lettuce. And this presentation is in fulfillment for my pest diagnostics course under the course code AGCP3107. So in this presentation, I'll do an overview of Latuca sativa, its nutritional benefits, its food uses, and I will go on to talk about one pest and one disease that commonly attacks Latuca sativa, the symptoms and damage associated with this pest and disease, and some control measures for this pest and disease. So Latuca sativa is commonly known as lettuce and it is a leafy green vegetable grown in many parts of the world. It is very popular among traditional farmers and hydroponic and aquaponic farmers due to its short growing time and wide market. Now when I say traditional farmers, I'm referring to farmers that generally would grow their crops in soil, whereas hydroponic and aquaponics are generally soilless means of farming. Also, in referring to markets, um, lettuce would generally be sold to like hotels. Some of the popular varieties include romaine, iceberg and Boston lettuce. So this is a pictorial representation of the three popular varieties. The romaine lettuce, the variety on your left, is characterized by having a long thick midrib or vein. It has rounded leaves. The leaves are tapered meaning that top part is wider than the basal part and as you go down towards the base of the lettuce, coming down towards here, it becomes more bitter. Then we go on to the iceberg lettuce, the variety in the middle. This one has an iconic ball shape and that is because unlike the other two varieties here, the leaves fold as it grows. And then we have the Boston lettuce on the right. This variety also has a thick midrib like the, the romaine lettuce. Its leaves are somewhat tapered as well but the leaves have a more ruffled look compared to the romaine as well as the tips like in this case can be purplish in color now we go on to the nutritional benefits of lettuce lettuce is a source of calcium potassium folate and vitamin c to name a few additionally lettuce being the water loving plant that it is you would find that majority of its weight is also in water. So there is that additional benefit of attaining water from lettuce. Okay, now it's food use. And I was specific in saying food uses because lettuce can also be used in other ways, such as in face mask remedies, just to name an example. So lettuce is commonly used in salads, whether it be garden salads or Caesar salads. It's used in foods such as hamburgers, in food wraps, or it, in some cases, it can be used as the wrap for the food. It can be used in soups, and it can be used in juices, smoothies as well. And now we will go on to the pest. Now, lettuce is commonly attacked by a worm called the cabbage worm, but sometimes it can be mistaken for the cabbage lupo, so before we go on to what damage the cabbage worm does, we should differentiate the two. So in this picture, at first glance, you may not be able to tell which is which, or maybe from the name cabbage looper, you may be able to identify which is the cabbage looper. The worm on the left is the cabbage looper. Its identifying characteristic is that it does not have legs um, right along its body so if you notice it has three legs here it doesn't have any legs here and then two more pairs of legs here compared to the cabbage worm which has legs right along its body now because of this the cabbage looper has this iconic way of moving in which it forms this loop this hunch as it moves the cabbage worm does not move like that 
So that is one way of determining whether you have a cabbage loop or a cabbage worm. If it forms this arch, then you have the cabbage loop. If it does not, then you potentially have a cabbage worm. Now the cabbage worm, its scientific name is Perrier Rappe. And the damage in the early stages on your lettuce plant, you will notice small holes and on the bottom or the top, you may notice small worms. In the more advanced stages, you may go from having small holes to la much larger holes. And in severe cases, you will only have the midribs or the veins remain. So like in the romaine lettuce and the Boston, you will only have that thick midrib le left. Whereas in the iceberg lettuce, which does not have that thick midrib, it may completely eat the entire head of lettuce. So now for the control measures. As a mechanical or physical control, you can remove the worms by hand and destroy them. This being the most labor intensive method as you have to physically go to each head of lettuce and examine it for any worms and then pick them all by hand. Then you have the biological control which will be done through birds, predatory wasps or in some cases chickens are used. Now you can find some companies that do breed predatory wasp that you can buy and put into your farm or your garden and they will primarily attack these worms. Now in cases of the chickens and birds they could also cause other damage that you may not want so you have to be cautious with this but biological control is a control method. Another control method is using chemicals such as Bacillus thuringiensis and Sevin's powder. Now chemical control should be used as a last result and of these two Sevin's powder is more toxic compared to Bacillus thuringiensis but in either case you should be careful when applying and wear protective clothing. Now we go on to the disease. Bacterial leaf spot also known as Pseudomonas in its early stages will have a small dark water soaked spot appearance and the picture to the right you may notice this here and also here this uh, this is much darker than the rest of the leaves in the more advanced stages now these spots will grow in size and turn black here and in these cases this is necrosis taking place where the spot is beginning to decay and and die eventually this will take over the entire leaf at which point the leaf is unusable additionally this may have an economic impact on both the consumer as well as the producer because from the consumer's perspective this is a leaf that is unusable and you may not be able to eat it from the farmer's perspective if they sell their lettuce at two prices based on the size of the lettuce having bacterial leaf spots will reduce the size of the lettuce because you have to pick these leaves off before you sell them in which case the weight of the lettuce will be reduced and you may have to sell at a lower cost now in terms of control for bacterial leaf spot cultural control is to remove the infected residue from the area of cultivation. This would mean removing the leaves from the farm or your garden completely rather than leaving them in the area because if you decide to plant back lettuce in this area and you have contaminated leaves on the ground, if they just harbor this bacteria and it is very possible that your next set of lettuce will get infected. Additionally, you can reduce the use of overhead sprinklers. Another control method use is chemical control. And for this, you can use copper-based fungicides, but with these fungicides, they are only effective as a preventative measure. If your lettuce have already been infected with 
bacterial leaf spots, then copper-based fungicides will not be as effective. And these are some references that were used in the making of this presentation. This brings the presentation to an end, and I hope that you, the viewer, were able to learn something from this. Thank you again.